Good morning. morning. I bid you peace and grace this Feast of Pentecost. We begin with our collect of welcoming. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, living within us, send to St. Peter's all who are hurting or in need, all who are searching for you or for answers in their lives. Prepare us this day to receive them as Christ would. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children in the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the teaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are you not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, 
and I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 104, lines 25 through 35 in, line, in verse 37. We will read responsibly by full verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living names too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships. And there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you. You give them their food in due season. You give it to them. They gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grow inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, We wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine, and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. 
Years ago, I was the assistant rector at Trinity Episcopal Church in Newport, Rhode Island, and weathered Hurricane Bernard with uh, a bunch of my friends in my apartment. In those days, I was living in an old repurposed rectory from St. Augustine's Roman Catholic Church, and I had one of the uh, priest's apartments that was sort of a, a big four-room thing that was sort of oddly configured on the middle floor of the windward side of the island. That all matters because it was a very tall pre-war sort of construction with huge windows and a beautiful view of the fifth ward of Newport, Rhode Island. And we had to be careful about the hurricane coming because um, big glass windows. So I was told by people who know things, the first thing you need to do is take masking tape and tape the windows. And the second thing you have to remember to do is to slightly open the windows just a little bit to let the building breathe. So I took that advice and did that. And then the hurricane came. And boy, did that building breathe. I mean, this was an old pre-war building that was really well built. Thick walls, heavy brick out exterior, heavy plaster interior. And the whole thing felt like the building was just flexing in and out as the storm would blow around us. And we sat and we listened to the rain and the wind for a while. And then uh, we heard that the eye had passed up the bay, so we were, we were feeling like we were past the, uh, the craziness. So we all bedded down. I was in my bed in my bedroom, and there was a moment in the middle of the night when I awoke and I felt the wind come through the window, the little gap that I created, come through the window like, I don't know what, just a solid object. And it came and it lifted the covers off my bed and blew over my body and then went out the door. Just, and then it was gone. And I was lying there in bed, and you can imagine kind of like eyes wide open, slight night terror feeling coming over me. And I was wondering, what did that, what was that? What just happened? What just happened to feel that kind of wind in just a moment? pass through, and then move on. Every time I look over at this stained glass window uh, that's dedicated to the Campbell family, and you can see the tongues of fire descending upon the apostles, uh, that sense of the commissioning, the experience of the Holy Spirit, like a great wind rushing into the room, and then tongues of fire dancing on their head, we're all caught up in that sort of tableau moment, and we kind of freeze it in our minds. Like a Polaroid photograph we pull out of a box that's sitting in our closet and we remember. We forget the dynamic feeling that must have been experienced in that moment when the wind rushed in, the atmosphere shifted, the energy in that room changed dramatically, so much so that the people within the room were altered forever by the experience. The Holy Spirit arriving in our midst was something that Jesus had promised, but it used obtuse language. We hear in the Gospel reading advocate, we hear in other places the word paraclete used. I'll defer to the classic scholar in this, but paraclete doesn't necessarily translate well into English because it's one of those nouns that's a little more active than just a state of being. It implies being alongside and with, and at the same time, it talks about being someone who is making intercession for, an actively engaged individual who is concerned for your well-being, and not only for your well-being, but a sense of you being engaged and connected to the processes that are dynamic in this living world that we inhabit. It implies not stasis, but dynamic and relationship. Something that moves us forward, that helps us get up when we've been knocked down and embrace what comes next. That gives us the ability to draw our next breath, take the next step, do the next thing. And to do that with a resolve to continue to move and live and have our being. And within that context, that is accomplished 
by the grace and love of God in our midst. Trying to describe the Holy Spirit to the kids in Sunday school last week, you know, you try to give the impression that God is both far off in heaven, but also so profoundly near and intimate to us that literally within every breath we take, we are inspired, literally, by the love and presence of God. We have the knowledge of ourselves as living beings because as scripture testified, we received ruach, the breath of God. And with that, we became not only aware and alive, but thinking and reasonable, able to process and wonder and dream and hope and fear and dread and desire and grow and change and evolve and connect to each other and to the divine. The dynamism of the presence of God and the Holy Spirit is not something that sits in stasis, nor is it far off. It is proximate to us. It provokes us. It is within us, between us, around us, and sustaining us all the days of our lives. It creates the happenstance of blessing and the wonder of seeing intentions come to fruition. It is the glory of God made manifest both in the corporate body of the church, but also in the incredible radical surprises we encounter when we are willing to open the windows and the doors of our own limitations and be challenged to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves. Ultimately, the Holy Spirit provokes us to a witness in which we are invested in working and laboring towards justice and peace as we respect the dignity of every human being. And if this sounds rote, it is, because this is our baptismal covenant, which Ava is about to lead us in reaffirming, and which people who are to be baptized this day are about to take on as their life's commitments. With the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we assume the responsibility not only to take on the blessings of this life that we have in Christ, but to communicate it out into the world to share it with others always, and to give it as the free gift given to us so that as we have life and have it abundantly, so too others may receive the same boon. As I was lying in that bed pondering what this great wind that had blown through my life meant for me, I was aware that that moment must have been what it was like to be in that upper room, to feel that intense movement of air, that incredible shifting of creation itself, so that not only in memory should we hold and remember the gift that was that moment in the upper room when the Holy Spirit intruded upon the church and transformed it was from something that was turned in on itself to something that was exploded outward, but also that in each of our lives the wind should touch us and remind us that we are evermore a leaf floating and engaged in the connections that are binding us not only to this massive, beautiful life of ministry that we share, but also to all the potential that God should intend through us. Amen. My siblings in Christ, I invite you to now stand and join in the renewal of our baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, O Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? 
My will of God as well. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will of God as well. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will of God as well. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will of God as well. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will of God as well. For all on our parish prayer list, especially Rick, Chris, Felicia, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Dylan, Kay, Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Kay, Sonny, Betty, Pat, Piper, Ayla, William, Peter, Ethel, Aiden, Eddie and Nancy, Cindy, Philippe, Florence, Oscar, Joseph, Patrick, Ernie, Keith, Paul, Doreen, Judy, Donna, Jason, Braden, <coughs> Pam, William, Lynn, Jeffrey, Catherine, John, Isabella, Terry, Emmy Grace, Chuck, and Nan. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the Anglican Church of Canada. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the high school and college graduates. We remember Sally, our bishop, Marshall, our rector, Elizabeth, our associate, and Ava, our seminarian. Our early communicants today are Devin Johnson, Christopher Johnson, and Isabel Garib. For those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Carter, Marissa, and Jen. We remember those serving in the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Matthew, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. Today's altar flowers are given to the glory of God by Christina Maffa Johnson and Niels Johnson in honor of Devin and Christopher Johnson on their communion and in memory of their grandparents, Kathleen Maffa and William Johnson. Intoxicate us with visions and dreams that will align with the, us with you. Jolt us from our inertia into action. Come into our lives with power. Come, Holy Spirit, and save us. Transform our melancholy into joy, our worry into peace, our despair into hope. We pray for healing for those who suffer from any distress or illness. Come into our lives with healing. Come, Holy Spirit, and Shape our weary and wounded souls into souls on fire for God's mission. God, Holy Spirit, save us. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace.
Uh, sadly and gladly, we are uh, getting ready to send one of our beloved off to a new chapter in life and ministry. The Reverend Elizabeth Marshall Casasola is getting ready to leave with Marcel to move to Maine, and uh, she'll be having her last Sunday with us. She's actually not with us today because she is in Boston. She participated as uh, a priest in the election of uh, their next diocesan bishop, and uh, we wish her well in that, and also we wish the new bishop-elect as well. Uh, all blessings and grace. So uh, she will be returning to us this week, and uh, we have one more Sunday with her. There will be one service next week for Trinity Sunday, and it will be at 9 a.m., and we will celebrate and love Liz and, uh, and Marcel as they get ready to head off into a new adventure. We have different events planned after the service, so please do make some time after that to participate in a reception. Um, there will be a message going out in the e-news, and you can call the office as well to RSVP to that uh, reception afterwards and uh, participate in that as well. Uh, Maureen and Alice are working on that. I hope you will avail yourself of the time next week to participate in that celebration of her life and ministry here in our midst, even as we send her off. And of course, if you haven't already booked your time up in Maine for blueberry season, you might wanna do that now to avoid the rush. I know several people are planning to go up there and visit with her soon. Um, Memorial Day is scheduled, and uh, of all of the different places, if you don't know this already, the American Legion at Spotswood does an honor guard that travels all around town to all the places where our own Spotswoodsian folk who are veterans are interred, and we visit those places and say prayers and uh, perform uh, ceremonies to honor their name, their witness, and their service to the country. So um, that begins over at Frost Woods at the cemetery, makes its circuit of Halmetta, et cetera. They will be arriving here at St. Peter's around 9.15 on Monday morning. So if you've never experienced that, please do join us for that. Um, we'll move from here, I believe, up to Spotswood Reformed, and then we'll do the municipal uh, memorials for the fire department, EMS, the police, and then finally finish with the ceremonies right around noonish or so at the uh, War Memorial. So if you can join us at least at 915 for the experience of honoring our fallen here on the campus, we have members of the uh, veterans community that go all the way back to the French and Indian War here at St. Peter's. And uh, please, if you can make the time to join us for that, please do so. I have. Uh, as the chaplain for the fire department and the police department, I've got to also participate in the rest. I look forward to that. If you want to join in, you're more than welcome to. Coming up uh, June 2nd, we will have Pride Sunday here, and uh, the Episcopal Church has released a new uh, shield in honor of Pride Month, and uh, there are different events going on in the diocese as well. Um, I believe June 15th, there will be a celebration Pride Eucharist down. Oh, I just lost it. Where was it going to be? I can't remember. We'll put it in the e-news so you can check that out. But we'll be observing it here and honoring that with a special sermon by Ava, as well as special prayers. So that'll be June 2nd at 9 a.m. June 9th at 9 a.m. We're going to have outside worship services um, that will occur out on the lawn, as we used to do during the pandemic, God willing, and the weather permitting as well. And then we're going to have a picnic to follow that. And you'll get information on that in the e-news as well. An update on what happened with the vestry this past week. We approved the cost for drawings for rebuilding of the steps at the parish hall. So hopefully by the end of the summer, you will see a new set of steps and uh, a reconfigured space uh, where we do our outreach and also where we take in donations for the, uh, the shop. Um, and then of course that uh, exit out of the building will be renewed and refreshed. So we look forward to sharing that time and that space with you. Um, and we also, at the, at the vestry, approved some events for celebrating Reverend Liz's departure, um, and you'll learn more about that as we get ready in the, uh, in the e-news. And then the change for change. Uh, John Grennan and his family walked yesterday down in Ocean Grove for the Sharing Network. John's journey um, is uh, one we've been supporting for a long time, and uh, we're honored to continue to do so for the next two quarters. That's the second quarter, which is now, and the third quarter, which is through the summer into the fall, 
will be supporting the sharing network, which is uh, supporting uh, both the donation and sharing of organs um, in New Jersey here, but also joins the nationwide network and support and gives support to families as they care for those who are receiving organ transplants. Of course, our daily office continues Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And then we also have the Wednesday noon Eucharist. And Luann has shop rent cards. We refreshed our inventory last week, so it's all good. If you are, like Laura and I, out planting your garden, please be mindful and plant a little bit extra for backyard garden partners. Um, it's a, almost time to start sharing some of that bounty. I noticed that the radishes are starting to come into fruit, and of course some of the early crops are already ready to be pulled in. If you're able to do so, please consider sharing some of those with Kelly's Cupboard and Alice's Cup, but of course you can use the ShopRite cards as well and make donations at the Spotswood ShopRite right at the checkout or bring them in here and share those good things with everyone. And of course, our lunch bunch is scheduled for June. We'll have more uh, opportunities for you to hear about that, and we look forward to sharing all these things with you. We do celebrate our early communicants as well as our two baptisans. And if you want to linger after the service and double dip on church, we've got a mariachi band for, Chris, for Pentecost. I'm pretty excited for that. It's going to be quite a raucous party. Any other announcements? You got anything? No? All right. Well, it's a great gift to be here gathered in the presence of God. Ofrecer a Dios un sacrificio de acción de gracias y cumplir vuestros votos al Altísimo. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Dios de temura, tanto amaste al mundo, que en la plenitud de los tiempos nos enviaste a tu Hijo único para redimirnos. Se encarnó por el Espíritu Santo, nació de la Virgen María y vivió como uno de nosotros, pero sin pecado. 
a la gente pobre la anunción, la salvación, a la gente en prisión, la libertad, a la gente afligida, la alegría. Para cumplir tus designios, se entregó a la muerte y levantándose del sepulcro, destruyó la muerte y renovó toda la creación. That we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. Padre Celestial, cuando llegó la hora de recibir tu gloria, tu Hijo no abandonó a sus amigos, sino que los amó hasta el fin. Cuando Esteban cenando tomó pan, te dio gracias, lo partió y se lo dio a sus discípulos, diciendo, tomen y coman. Esto es mi cuerpo que se entrega por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria mía. Después de cenar, tomo el cáliz de vino. Te dio gracias y se lo di, la dio a sus discípulos diciendo, Beban todos, esto es mi sangre de la nueva alianza, que por ustedes y por todos derrama para el perdón de los pecados. Cada vez que to beban, lo beban, hagan esto en memoria mía. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and death to your, and resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may be descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Haz que al compartir este pan y este caliz, seamos uno en cuerpo y en espíritu, una ofrenda viva en Cristo para alabanza de tu nombre. No te olvides, Señor, de tu santa iglesia católica y apostólica, redimida por la sangre de tu ungido. Haz visible su unidad, constante su fe y permanente su paz. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with Blessed Peter, our patron, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them, and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, in the language of our hearts, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The, of heaven. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Mm -hmm.
body of Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Well, if there is, come on up. <laughs> Not sure where our basket went. Oh, here it is. Hey, guys. Jennifer and Josh, this is Alexander weekend, right? And today, today is Alexander Day. So it's your birthday. It's Christopher's birthday. Christopher's birthday and your anniversary. Yeah. Okay, but Christopher's sleeping. <laughs> yeah, so actually, because it is Christopher's birthday, but he's not here, but you guys will stand as proxy. Can we sing him happy birthday today? Sure. Okay, so happy birthday to Christopher. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Christopher. Happy birthday to you. And happy anniversary to you guys. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience and wisdom and true godliness that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, so here's a birthday bookmark for Christopher. Anniversary bookmarks for you guys. And because you came to church today, but he didn't, here are stickers for you guys to wear. And here's one for him to have later. There we go. Que el Espíritu de verdad les conduzca a toda verdad, dándoles gracia para confesar que Jesucristo es el Señor y para proclamar las maravillosas obras de Dios. Y la bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo, sea con ustedes y permanece siempre con ustedes. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. All right, please do. Oh, we don't have our closing hymn. Um, 594. 594 in your hymnal. 594.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.